Give it up for Samuel Stewart Hunter. I want to tell you a story about a time that I learned that I was an asshole. Um, and I had learned this lesson before in, in different ways, because there are different kinds of assholes, uh, including real ones. And um, this was the day that I learned that I was this kind. So I am I'm a flake. I'm a bit of a flake, and I, uh, I'm, I'm chronically tardy. Uh, and so is my father, so maybe, you know, maybe there's an excuse. Doesn't matter. You shouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> Because it makes you a, a bad person, um, like me. And I'm also very proud. And when you're proud and a flake, uh, you develop a habit of lying very quickly on your feet uh, because you have to protect your ego and also make people get off your back. Um, so that's what the story's about. Um, now, I'm going to take you back. I was a junior at the University of California, San Diego, go Tritons. Uh, ooh, that's the contingent. And uh, <laughs> we're all friends. Um, and uh, I'm a junior, UC San Diego, and I woke up at 8 in the morning, which is a totally fine time to wake up unless you have a final at 8 in the morning, uh, which I did. Uh, I had Hebrew 101. I was taking Hebrew. Cause, and... Um, <laughs> So, uh, so I was taking Hebrew, and I, I wake up at 8 o'clock, and I realize what has happened. And immediately my brain goes into decision-making calculus mode. I think, okay, so I can, get, I can get out the door right now and be about 10 minutes late and look like this. Not like this, but like how I look just waking up. And uh, then I only have one excuse, and that is obvi, I overslept. Uh, or I can take 10 minutes to shower and do my hair and all that. And then I have a whole world of excuses open to me. Um, and so that's like the first two seconds of being awake. So I'm in the shower, and then I'm thinking, what's the ex now that I have this world open to me, what's the excuse? And I think about my tried and true excuse, which is diarrhea. Um, because when you tell someone that you had diarrhea, they go, oh, that really sucks. Sit down, rest, can I get you anything? <laughs> Sometimes you don't even have to do the work that you were late for. It's great. But then I realized I'm going to a final where I have to sit for a couple of hours and not have diarrhea. So that wasn't gonna work. So then I go to my second favorite excuse, which I have less practice with because I've only been using it since I was 16. But uh, it's this one, car accident. So I start going, okay, well, like, what's, what's, the, what's the story, what's the car accident story? Because you don't want to give out more information than you have to. So you start thinking, what's, like, the first round? The first round is, sorry, I'm late, I was in a car accident. If they ask questions, you go, yeah, what happened? A guy sideswiped me on the 805 and pulled over, did the insurance. Nobody was hurt, just some damage to the car. Go about your business. Not a problem. Okay, so that's, like, my plan. That's my plan. And this is all, like, on my way to my car. So I get in my car and I'm driving up to campus and I'm rooting around in the trash on the floor looking for anything to write on and I find a business card and I think, oh, perfect, this is so good. So I grab the business card, I pull up to campus and I start doing the calculus again because I can't park on campus because it's, it's full. I'm sure it's full, it's always full. So I go to the two hour parking south of campus in the residential area, okay, f fine, park there, not a problem. I take that business card and I just write Nine numbers on it. Nine numbers and the word Allstate. Because I'm like, if my professor asks, I'm going to need some proof. Right? So I haul ass the 10 minutes from the south end to the middle of campus, where my final is. And I walk in there and I say, I'm sorry I'm late. I got in a car accident. And he cuts me off. And he just says, it's fine. Here's your test sit down. I'm like, okay. Didn't even need to do that. So I've been in like high anxiety terror mode. Think of the lie mode for, you know, I guess 20 minutes at this point and uh, didn't even need to be there. And I sit down and I finish my test and turn it in. No problem. I'm done right on time. I'm done right on time. And I've got half an hour to get to my next final, which was biological psychology. Uh, I can't tell you anything about that class. Um, <laughs> 
and that would be fine because where I was was about 12, a 12 minute walk south of where I needed to be. Uh, and I had 30 minutes to get there. So you think, great, 18 minutes to get a snack. Except that I had parked, as I said, in two hour parking and it had been two hours. So I had to walk 10 minutes south, move my car, then walk 22 minutes north, best case scenario, even if I moved my car instantly, I'm two minutes late. And I think, well, that's all right. I've already got an excuse. So fine, but I, I still want a motor. So I'm going, I'm heading down south. I'm heading back to my car and I'm like Keanu Reeves and like people are like the bullets in the matrix. And I'm just like, <laughs> it's like, you know, like when you get really zen about getting through pedestrian traffic and you're just like, yeah, got it. Yes. I'm like, I'm like Legolas over here. I'm like just killing it. And I get to my car and what I should have done now in hindsight, I realized what I should have done was one, checked if my car had even been chalked. Didn't do that. Right. Two, if it had been chalked, just <laughs> for, for the sake of the podcast, I licked my thumb and then rubbed the tire. Um, or, you know, even if that didn't work, just like roll back and forth in the spot until the chalk goes away. Um, but I had been in high anxiety mode for a couple hours at this point, and I hadn't eaten yet. Hadn't eaten. So I didn't think at all. I just pulled out, and of course, because it's finals week, someone immediately pulled into my parking spot, so I couldn't get that back. So I'm out, and I'm looking around. We're going through the residential up and down the streets, and I'm looking around, and can't find anything, can't find anything. Finally, I look in my side mirror. I see someone's pulling out, and if I can just turn around really quick, then I can have their spot. So now I'm looking for a driveway to pull into to turn around, and I'm not looking ahead of me, which is what I should have been doing, because I rear-ended someone. And the irony didn't even hit me at that point. I was just like, ugh, ugh, ugh. And I get out of the car, and I'm like, okay, let's just exchange information. And she starts shouting at me. She's like, I'm already late for my final. And I'm like, we all are. <laughs> so I'm like, just, just, let's just exchange information and that'll be that. And I give her my information and she takes out her iPhone, which at this time was still a status symbol and only on AT&T. And she took a picture of my insurance information with her phone and I remember thinking, that is amazing. And I want that. Because I had an LG chocolate and if you took pictures, you... <laughs> Yes, you, you know, you guys know. Ladies, I had an LG chocolate. Uh, the only way you could get your pictures off an LG chocolate was to go to the Verizon website and download them. And I didn't know the password because my mother managed the account. So, so like, that wasn't gonna work. But I still had a pen, so like, fine. Um, but I just remember thinking, I remember thinking at the time, like, hey, that's really cool. Um, and then I'm like, okay, now I need your insurance information. She goes, why? You hit me. I have yours. That's the end. And I was like, I don't think that's true. Um, and I go, I go, no, like, I need yours and you need mine. And then we call and then they talk to each other. And so we don't talk to each other. And she's like, oh, that's so stupid. And I was like, okay. I, like, just, can we go? Like, I need it and you need it. And we, this is what we need to do. So finally, she like gives me your insurance information and I have to copy it down manually. And fine, okay. And I give her that spot that opened up because, nice. come on, because I hit her, because I hit her car. Um, and uh, I finally find a space. I haul ass to the north end of campus I make that 22 minute walk in 21 minutes. Yeah, yeah, except that the whole thing had taken 20 minutes to get through anyway, so I was still 20 minutes late. Um, but, so I get there and I go, and I go, I'm sorry I'm late, I, I rear-ended someone, and I told the truth, I said I rear-ended someone uh, down south of campus and, and I'm sorry I'm late. And my professor, who by the way is dressed in like a zebra print pantsuit, <laughs> It's like a long jacket, like down to here, but like, no. but like it's all like zebra print. And she looks at me and she goes, so you're an asshole and somehow this is my problem? And I was like, oh my God, you're right. 
Like, that's it. Like, the fates exist. Uh, they don't like it when you flaunt your success in their face. And they will rain down upon you with God's own thunder. Like, that's totally true. And so, though I don't remember anything from biological psychology, I definitely learned that. Thank you. Sam Hunter, ladies and gentlemen.